is part two discussing the transmissions. And I hope to help you guys decide what transmission will suit your swap the best. Uh, for the automatics, there are three transmissions being utilized. The 6L80, which is 6-speed, 8L90, which is 8-speed, and a 10L80, which is a 10-speed. Um, you can get an 80 or 90. It designates, designates strength level. The LT4s came with the stronger 90s. All right, the 6L80, in my opinion, is a great, reliable transmission. It Mine shifts the same day in, day out. I know exactly what to expect. Uh, the, these have an internal TCM, so you, you'll never see it. It's part of the valve body. Um, your first gear is a 4 to 1 gear ratio, and your your uh, last gear, your overdrive, is a 0 .66. Um, these, once again, the computer's inside, so very little, little wiring is needed to operate these. Next, you have the 8L90, which is the most popular and common transmission on the Gen 5 platform. These came with on the 5.3s and the 6.2s. So the first gear is a 4.56, and your last gear in the overdrive is a 0.65. Next, the 10-speed is what most people like to try to get. They can get their hands on one. They are the better shifting of the transmissions. Um, honestly, 6LE shifts great. The 10-speed can shift a bit faster. Um, and you have more gear, so it makes it feel more powerful at all times. Um, and look at that first gear, 4.69. It's a huge difference. And then your overdrive is a 0.63. So you'll have more torque, and you'll get slightly better fuel economy with, with with these numbers and the way they operate. Now, on both of these, on all these transmissions right here, if they came in with these years on these motors, they are slightly different internally. So you do not want to mix match them. These also came on the uh, Gen 2, Gen 5 engines. But they are, the 8 speeds and 10 speeds are way different. Uh, the 8 speed has completely different wiring. So it's wired like it's completely different inside, has a different Prindle sensor, and is not compatible with the uh, E92 ECU. The 10 speed, huge valve body change. They added a solenoid, I believe, for the torque converter. It has a, uh, I believe, a triple disc torque converter. Um, they're way different. So you want to be very careful with doing these newer 10 speeds and then mixing and matching things. Uh, Gen 5s will punish you if you try and mix and match things incorrectly. And there's very few people that will be able to figure this out. I'm one of the people that I help a lot of people out every day, whether they're my customers or not, on how to figure this out. So um, let's get into what to do. So um, I'll, actually, let's start with what transmission I I... I recommend for different things. Um, 6L80s are great for uh, daily drivers, mild powered swaps. These hold uh, a little less power than the other transmissions. Um, super simple. Use a standard slip slip yoke with a drive shaft. Um, all these transmissions are the same size externally, except for the 10 speed is a few inches taller, which can screw a, screw you up in a muscle car. But for the most part, they're the same length. Um, so the 6 speed's great. Pretty affordable. Um, they've been used since 2007, so a lot of time to get make them better. Um, the eight speeds, whew, they're all over the place. You don't know what you're going to get, like a box of chocolates. It's uh, in uh, even on mine, the 2016 older 8L90s. I do not have much luck with. It will shift different every single day. They don't shift great. You get the the 2018 and ups. They usually shift much better. Um, my brother has a 2016 LT4 Corvette. His 8-speed shifts just fine. But on swaps, we have a lot of problems with the 8-speed. It's been a huge headache of mine. Um, everything's got to be matched up perfectly with the TCM part numbers, even the year of the ECU. You, don't, you do not want to mix and match the years. You know, If you have a 2018 um, 8L90, um, that would be an 8U code. Uh, that would be 18 to 19. You try to use a 2015 ECU on it, it's not going to work. Um, you got to use a 2018 engine ECU on the 8U coded 
um, eight speeds. So do not mix and match this stuff. If you try to do it, try to contact me, um, and I'll, I'll help you make sure this stuff is compatible. Uh, the 10 speeds, uh, a great transmission for the most part. They still have issues and things like that, but um, these shift fine. These are not the same temperament as the 8 speed. So I'd either get a 6L80 or a 10 speed or a newer 8 speed on those, okay? Stay away from the 2016 and older 8 speeds. I just have not had much luck with them. Um, so, and where I really like different transmissions for different things, um, like I said, daily drivers, 6L80s. Eight speeds, if you get a deal on them, they're great. Um, they'll handle a little bit of power. Um, great for off-roading uh, and having those better gear ratios and things like that. The 10 speed kind of does it all. It's great for off-roading and it's also great for racing. Um, but they cost more and they're, they are a bit bigger transmission. So these are very hard to fit on any vehicles that are low to the ground. Um, so just, just be aware of that. Um, both the 8 speeds and 10 speeds have external TCMs, so that's one thing to be uh, aware of. And um, the early 8 speeds use a T87 or a T87A TCM. T87s do not need to be unlocked. You can just uh, program them with HP tuners. T87s came out in 2017, and these are encrypted, so these need to be sent out to be unlocked before you can even program it. And you're receiving a file from HP Tuners. That's why you get a warning. Uh, you will never read what's actually on that T87A. You can only write the HP Tuners file onto it and save it each time. So that's how that works. And these cost more. These are $200 to un unlock or maybe $150. Then $200 to license it. Where these uh, don't cost anything, I believe. I don't think you have to license a T87. Um, just like a 6L80, you don't need to license them. All right. As there are benefits, 6L80s, there's no licensing or unlocking need to be done. You can just get an HP tuners and make your changes. Um, the, Gen, the Gen 2s, for the most part, used a T93 um, TCM. I don't know. They're just a different design. And they, just like the E90, they're a different computer. Um, these will all, if you use both the match components, all this will work with its compatible transmission just fine. But when you take a new 10 speed and throw it on to an older Gen 5 with an E92, you're going to have problems. For one, you cannot do that with an 8L90 that came on the Gen 2, Gen 5 engines. Um, unfortunately, it's hard to tell. They look the same. There's a transmission ID tag on them, and I know the codes, and I can tell you if that will work or not. Um, but you got to be very careful. Um, I'm buying a new 8 speeds, and a lot of them are electronically shifted, meaning there is no uh, shift lever on it. It's turned by a dial. So if there's no shift lever on it, and you can grab that, um, that uh, knob that comes out, and you can spin it with your hand, you feel no detents, do not get that transmission, it will never work on a swap. So I don't want to say never, but it, it will it'll be years before we figure it out. So stay away from that. Um, the 10 speeds have that stuff too. The new Denali's and Escalades all have that stuff. And it just ruined the transmission for our swaps. So stay away from those. You need to have a shift lever on it. Um, that's very, very, very important. Um, then if you try to, you can use a 10 speed off a Gen 2. If it has a shift lever, I mean, you can do it, but you need a custom TCM from Powertrain Control Solutions. Um, and that is whole nother thing but that's about an eight to eight eight hundred dollar ordeal to do to get the TCM and license it and it's a custom TCM they do their magic and it makes it compatible with the e92 so it is possible just a weird way of going about it so but if you want to use a newer 10 speed you gotta do it the older 10 speeds are getting more miles on them they're harder to find um, I would not buy a, a 10 speed or an 8 speed with 80,000 or more miles on it because GM made them to really only last to about 100,000 miles on it um, due to the materials um, that they're manufactured out of. This is the valve bodies are causing all the issues. Uh, they wear out too fast. So 
you do not why go through all the work and throw that money in there and you're lucky to get 20,000 miles out of that transmission before it fails because of the valve body so i would not do that i'd try to get one 50,000 miles and uh just take care of it and hope for the best six of ladies they'll last pretty good they don't have as many problems so um, again, the main takeaway, I try to tell every customer, please make sure that thing has a shift lever on it and it has detents. If it does not, do not use it. Do not buy the swap because the transmission is not usable. Um, so that's my spiel on the transmissions. And I hope you guys find that helpful. I know I don't have a lot of pictures, but um, don't really need too many pictures. I can tell you how to ID these three transmissions very, very quickly. The 6L80, the bell housing is removable. So you can see it is physically bolts on the transmission. It, the bell housing can be removed. Next, the eight speeds. It's like a 4L80, it's a continuous case. The, the bell housing is part of the case. You cannot remove it. And then you're probably wondering how you tell a 10 speed from eight speed. The 10 speeds all have a thermal blanket on top the entire upper half of the transmission looks like thick aluminum foil so that's how you immediately tell them a difference uh, removable bell housing um, solid uh, tra transmission case and then the 10 speed has a heat blanket that covers the entire thing the, there's no reason for that heat blanket to ever be removed and it's kind of hard to do anyways so that's how you can immediately tell what you have on your transmission types all right, well, I hope you guys find this information helpful and let me know if you guys need any help. Thanks for watching.